on today's spookerific review, we're going to be having a look at the silver screen machines. This is the Ghostbusters Ecto-1 1959 Cadillac. Help save the world from an otherworldly takeover with this amazingly detailed die-cast replica of the original Ghostbusters Ecto-1. Fitted with highly detailed gadgets and gizmos, this amazingly accurate die-cast replica is sure to catch even more ghastly ghouls than ever. We're proud to add this iconic vehicle to the Silver Screen Machines lineup. It's sure to conjure up great memories from both movie fans and die-cast collectors alike. Now, before we have a look at the Ecto-1, let's figure out how big the vehicle is. We're going to first take the dimensions to the height. And there we go. The height of the Ecto-1 is 4 inches in height. In centimeters, you're looking at 10.2. Let's switch that back to centimeters, or inches, I should say. There we go. And from bumper to bumper, I kind of suspected it was going to be this long. It's 12 inches from bumper to bumper, 12 inches in length, and in centimeters, it's 30.4. The Ecto-1 does come with one accessory, and that being a little Slimer. I will admit the Slimer isn't the greatest. It sort of looks like something you would have gone to a souvenir shop at like Niagara Falls and picked up for yourself. It doesn't really look all that great as... Slimer, but it's probably never going to be something I'm going to display with the vehicle anyways. To its credit, though, it is made of a translucent plastic. Not that running my hand behind it is going to help assist in that. You can see, though, at least through the hand, that it is a translucent. It's almost even like a rubbery plastic. It looks like something that really should sit on top of a pencil, like a pencil topper. But it's, it is what it is. I mean, again, it's not spectacular would never display it with it so we'll just move that out of the way as for the ecto-1 i believe this is the second ecto-1 that i've had a look at i feel the first one might have been like hot wheels i would have to go back and double check it but i don't think it's really that much different between the two vehicles i'll probably do a comparison of it at some point down the road but here we have the of course the very famous ecto-1 uh, made famous in the original Ghostbusters, and then slightly retrofitted when we got the Ecto-1A for Ghostbusters 2. There's really a lot to showcase here for this vehicle. I'm actually glad I'm going back in some regards and having a look at it again, even though it's not really from the same company, because it does give me a chance to do this in hopefully a much clearer and uh, more pristine video. So why don't we start at the front, the front grill here, and we've got the Ecto-1 with New York featured down below. You can spin the vehicle around, and there's no secondary uh, license plate. It's in the Ecto-1, it was only on the front here. Uh, there's a couple of moving and opening components to it. It does have rubber tires, which is a nice touch. Uh, it also does have uh, rolling wheels, or... It does have rolling wheels, but it also does have turning wheels as well. The back tires do not rotate. They're just solely rolling tires. But I, I like the fact that the tires 
uh, do pivot back and forth. Gives you something a little extra to do with it. Like if you want to display it, I actually would be more inclined to display it with like the tires kind of facing outward, almost as if it's turning into, you know, it's, uh, you know, the headquarters or the fire hall, for example. Even though I guess it would be pulling in this way. Um, it is a nice, heavy feeling vehicle. All of it being, really all of it being uh, metal, except for the undercarriage, which is plastic. And then all the stuff that's basically on the top of it is also in plastic. But the rest of it feels like it's all heavy, heavy metal. It's very pristine. Um, it doesn't have any paint problems with it. It's just got a little few little areas. Maybe like right there is something I could probably just touch up with a cloth. But other than that, everything is nice and clean and pristine on it. You've got the Ecto, the Ghostbusters uh, ghost sign there on the one side and featured also on the other side and of course featured on the back. None of this, none of anything on here lights up. It would have been nice if the headlights could have lit up, but it would have also added the additional cost to an otherwise already $100 uh, replica. This 1 18th scale uh, Ecto-1 I picked up at my local comic book store and it was $100. Although again, when I picked this one up, I feel like in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I, I know I have the other Ecto-1, which I will do a comparison, I think, of one day. And uh, I think it's basically, if not the exact same vehicle, with the same Slimer. Now, the other one might have either been Hot Wheels or it might have even been Joyride. And it might have also been something that this company then bought the rights to and was able to distribute. Because this is a relatively new release, or the comic book store just recently you know, just re recently started stocking these again. So a couple of little notable things here on the top. Uh, we've got the tank featured on the side with little danger stickers and labels and stuff like that on it. Of course, you've got the front and the back sirens. We've got the ladder there on the side. Got little hoses. You've got the antenna feature on the front. And uh, if we just spin the car around here, the doors do open, which is also something I like. Inside, you can see the CB radio. There's a steering wheel. The steering wheel does turn. I don't know if I would be turning it too much, though, just in case. Of course, you've got the front seats. You spin it around. And you've got a door that opens on this side as well. And inside, again, you've just got in the CB radio. It looks like there's a tape deck in there as well. Uh, they've molded the interior of the door right. Let me just spin this around a little bit more harder to review. It's even got the little turn, the crank for the uh, the uh, windshield, the side window. Even though this technically doesn't have windows, you just assume that the windows have already gone into the door. They've already rolled them down. The other thing that the Ecto-1 has, the replica here, the back door opens. Now I find it's a little harder to get your finger in there the hinge, I think, isn't as loose as, say, for the door. Or the doors are just a lot easier because you're also grabbing them from the open window. Um, but the back here, just get your finger in the door. There we go. And that opens up. Um, one thing that I, I wish they could have included was the little roll cart in which the proton packs sat on top of. I don't expect necessarily that the the proton packs had to sit on top of the rack, but just something that they could have filled in this area because you can see this is this is obviously where the stretcher or I guess the the casket would go into because obviously this is a hearse. But in the movie, they clearly aren't carting around caskets; they're carting around proton packs. So I wish that there was that little cart on the inside, the little thing that they pull out, and then again, all the proton packs are sitting on top of that. There is a little computer. It's just located on the side, right? Not sure if you can see it, but it's right in there. And then on the other side, this is kind of where you see more of the workings, but it's really hard to, to show it in the camera. There is a little console right there, and there is actually right there a monitor. These are all things that are a little trickier to make out. It's right there, actually, if you can see it. So those are nice little small details. Things that you wouldn't be able to normally see just because, well, you can't open the door any bit wider than this. That's as far out as it will open up. The other thing that the Ecto-1 has, we just spin it around. The front hood opens up and you've got the exposed motor inside there.
and it's really nicely done too. Uh, off colors there of like the blue and there's some gray and some silver in there. This feels also like it's metal. The motor and everything else inside here is all plastic. Headlights are plastic. The grill is plastic, but the main body is metal. As I've already discussed, uh, the Ecto-1 rolls really easy. I like the fact that these tires, the tires go back and forth. And actually, let me just show you too. When you do take the tires and you tilt them, the steering wheel also turns with it, which is a, a little small touch that I like. You got the little side floodlight, a little search light there. It's, a, it's again, a really neat looking vehicle. The only thing I would omit from a display like this is obviously Slimer because I don't think the Slimer looks all that great. Um, if they had also incorporated like a bottom base, something like a little ramp or like a base that the car could sit atop of, and then it would have had the Ghostbusters because this is this is part of the Silver Screen Machine line, and they've also released a whole bunch of other uh, you know cinematic vehicles. If they had all had a consistent base to it where they had silver screen on like the one side and then you had the name of the movie in which the vehicle is taken from, I think that would have been also a nice touch because sometimes the 118th scale vehicles, I have a fair number of them. I want to say I want to have, I think I have about eight of them or so. And some of them have display bases depending on whether you're picking up like the Joy Joyride Studios or if you're picking up like the Hot Wheels, for example, some of them have display bases, some of them don't. This one happens not to have it. I think it would have been neat if they had incorporated it as a display base. But still, the takeaway from this is a really neat looking replica of the ever popular, ever famous Ecto-1. I don't really want to consider myself a 118th scale diecast collector guy. I have enough stuff that I collect in my life that I don't need to start getting into diecast cars either, but there are certain television and movie cars that I grew up with that I'd like to get replicas for. So my 118th scale collection is still pretty small. I think it sits at only, only around six to eight vehicles, and those include the General Lee from Dukes of Hazzard, kits from Knight Rider, and a handful of DeLoreans from Back to the Future, and of course, the 1959 Cadillac here from Ghostbusters. I don't think I've seen many examples of Ecto-1A. Hot Wheels might have released a 118 scale version of that, but much like everything else, those die cast 118 scale collectibles are very expensive, especially if they're not circulated anymore. Speaking of circulation, I'm certain I have already looked at this vehicle before, maybe not from this company. So I think that the other one that I had looked at was either Hot Wheels or it was Joyride Studios. And if it was Joyride, I'm thinking that that company has now been bought by this company, and that's why we're getting a recirculated version of the Ecto-1. I'd have to go back and double check the vehicle that I already have, and if the case that it is a different vehicle, I'll let you guys know in the comments section down below. This one I think is still rel relatively easy to come by, although the price point may be a little on the staggering side. Here in Canada, I picked up the Ecto-1A, or the Ecto-1, I think it was for about 115, about 120 to pick up this for your to pick up this for myself. If you guys are interested in getting this one for yourself, you can check your local comic book store. They may be able to order it in. I think I've also seen that Big Bad Toy Store and other online stores are also stocking vehicles like this. And I think they're fun little pickups if you want something just to display. It's not certainly something that you're going to be playing with, nor is there really a figure small enough, I think, to fit into the seats of these anyways. But they're a nice one of those upscaled collectibles that generally older people, quote unquote, older people like to collect. That they usually put them on a shelf. And now that I'm looking at this one, I'm kind of thinking to myself that there's other vehicles I'd like to pick up, but I guess that is because I'm also old and the joys of being old. Either way, though, today's spookerific review, I decided I want to have a look at this for a spooky spot, namely because Ghostbusters, I was considered more to be a horror than I considered a comedy. So for that reason, I thought it was fitting. I had this one in my collection for a while. It was sort of, I think I had bought this from the comic book store to make a short story long bought this at the comic book store about a month and a half ago and it just sat on a shelf and I thought to myself no I want to review it but I think I'm going to review and wait for it to do it during the month of Spotober and that's why we're having a look at it today for this spooky spot <gasps> long-winded 
Either way, today's spookerific review, we were having a look at the silver screen machines. This was the Ghostbusters Ecto-1A 1959 Cadillac. If you manage to pick up one of these for yourself, let me know down below what you think of these. And if you'd like to me, if you'd like to see me review more 118 scale die cast cars, I have, like I said, about six to eight of them, and probably will pick up a, love, a couple more of the notable examples for me. I might want to even pick up like the Munsters car, and maybe like the A team, the A team car, and maybe like the Mad Max. I think those are a couple of ones I'd like to get, and of course the Christine. But like I said, I'm not going to get every single die cast car out there. It's really only the ones that. I remember growing up with, and so far those are the ones that uh, have st stood out for me as ones I wanted to pick up. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other spooky spot videos for the month of, of Spottober and 2018, there's a playlist all for that. And if you want to go back and have a look at some of my earlier spooky spots from previous years, there's also a playlist there for you as well. Now, I know we're only getting, we're getting down to like the last three or four days of October, before we get to, of course, Halloween. I may very well carry Spooky Spots right over Halloween because there's still a fair bit of content that I wanted to have a look at that I just didn't get a chance to look at just yet. So if you guys like Spooky Spots, don't worry, some more stuff's gonna be coming your way as we have a look at other neat looking collectibles, all sort of, kinda sort of, in the vein of Halloween. As always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do, and I'll see you next time.